All right, for this exhibition match, which contains proxies, we have True Draco Magic Bullets versus Sherman and Vendrid. So these archetypes aren't exactly out yet for us in TCG. Well, Vendrid is, but sure, surely enough, Magic Bullets aren't. And on the blue side, we have myself playing the True Draco Magic Bullets, as I featured previously on other videos. And on the right side, we have Ethan playing Chirnoi Vendred. And hopefully you guys like this new layout. If you guys have been with us since the beginning, this is the third dueling layout we've done for live duels. Hopefully you know, my effort doesn't go unnoticed here. But Ethan's going to start off really strong with a Shiranoi Solitaire. Oh, and for those of you guys who are interested in this beautiful play mat, this cloth two-player mat that has the link zones updated for the new Master Rule, you can check it out at ImperialDuelist.com. ImperialDuelist.com and uh, they will have it for you. Very limited time, so if you guys check it out at a later date, you probably won't see it anymore. Yeah, it's a very beautiful map. I actually really enjoy it. If you guys enjoyed the layout right here, you see what I mean. So we're going to start off with the Shiranoi into the Uni Zombie. The Uni Zombie now just ditched a Mizuki into the graveyard from deck, and we're going to see a banishing of the Mizuki special summoning out the Shiranoi Solitaire. Of course, that increases the Uni Zombie's level to 4. This is a really good opening. We're going to see a level 8 Synchro Summon right into the zone. We're going to see a Omega. Omega basically can just rip out one card in my hand already. That's not good. So he's going to be activating that card effect during the main phase. Taking away one of the very important cards of Magic Bullet Cross Dominator. That is the zero of all stats and also negate the effect of the monster of course one of those biggest weakness and one of the biggest conditions of magic bullet cards in general is that you need a magic bullet monster to activate any of the cards let alone activate from hand we're gonna see a toss oh was there soul charge soul charge was played 2000 life points and he's gonna revive two and then he's going to ditch his uh vendred origin to increase the level of his uni zombie to four again and he's gonna perform oh this is a double omega play and he's going to take out he's gonna give me a really really small opening hand taking away casper i believe that was one of the most important monsters in my current hand therefore leaving me with a bit of a bricky situation top decking a death parado uh not sure how much further i can go with this hand this hand does not look very strong there is a true king's uh, return but he did pay 2,000 life points. This is this could be one of those life point games. I'm going to set the True King's Return, tribute it off to summon out the Dynamite Knight. And I proceed to attack directly for 25. Now, I do know that there is an Omega coming back, so that is going to be very scary. This is actually going to push Ethan pretty low. He's at now 3,500 life points. Oh, or is it 2030? Yes, 3,500 life points. That is really low. But with the double Omega, he, he's got to be very careful if he wants to do anything right now. He doesn't want to blind activate anything at this moment because uh, me adding a card into my hand is going to ruin some of his Omega effects. Or maybe I can do a double chump block with more True King's Return. So I'll take the 300 and I'll take a 28. That was inevitable. So far on Ethan's side, we haven't seen any of the uh, the Vendred toolbox or the Vendred engine. And on my side, I guess we've seen only the two Dracos. So this was nothing new so far. Hopefully we can get to some of the more meaty plays in a bit. But this game is eventually going to get to a point where both of us are low on resources. But with double Omega, he's going to leave the Omegas on the field and he's going to pass turn. I'm going to draw for turn. Standby phase, we're going to see Omega put back a Mizuki into the graveyard. Of course, Omega can put back any banished card, not just monsters. It can even be a face-down banished card, too. And we're going to see a normal summon of Casper. Here's the interesting part. He's going to activate the Omega, and I'm going to chain the Cross Dominator to negate the effect of Omega. And because the Omega was negated, and I activated in the card in the same column as the Omega, I spell a trap in the same column as it, I am, well, I was going to add another card to my hand. However, uh, Ethan does respond with an Ash Blossom Joyous Spring, preventing the search. Now I'm going to attack into the Omega. Omega does have zero stats. This 
causes him to take another 12 he will now be at 23. That is actually a bit unfortunate. I'm playing at low resource here. Like, think of all the magic bullet monsters as your guns. If your guns are working, you're great. But then he just prevented me from reloading more ammo. And that's actually going to put me into an interesting spot. I like the design mechanic of the magic bullets overall. Some people compare them to Zodiacs. And I actually find it to be, well, not quite the same. The conditions are very, very true. Because you have to have a magic bullet monster to even be able to activate any of the spells and that is actually going to be very difficult for me to play all the spells and traps have that condition and if you can remove take the gun away basically can't activate anything now ethan is now going to proceed to summon out Ogozuki, and what did i miss in the past so far uh he used Omega to shuffle back in a soul charge when he put his uh, Omega from the graveyard back into the extra deck. And, okay, Gozuki sends Mizuki into the graveyard. And this actually puts me in a bit of an awkward spot. He's going to swing into it. I do have a Death Marauder in hand, which allows me to destroy one face-up card on the field as long as I control a Magic Bullet. It is a trap that I can activate from my hand, thanks to Magic Bullet Casper's effect. And in fact, all the Magic Bullets have this continuous effect available. So I'm going to pop the Omega instead. Because I do not want to deal with that Omega. Especially when Omega cannot escape in the battle phase, this is the perfect timing to do it. Since I did not really lose any monsters on my side of the field and no, nothing got resummoned, uh, I can the battle continues and during damage time I'm going to activate Cross Dominator. Now just a quick note about uh, Magic Bullet monsters and the damage step, they cannot get their triggers effects off of the damage step. It does say except for the damage step. So that being said, because I already used my effect and my effects are once per turn, it didn't matter if I activated that during the damage step or not. Overall, this is still not exactly a good position for me to be in. Ethan does have a lot of Mizukis in Grave, two Mizukis in Grave that are still very much alive. He can basically re-establish his entire board here. And unfortunately, he has not gotten into any of his Vendred, uh, I guess his Vendred side of the deck. The Vendred stuff is very scary. If, of course, if he is ritual summoned with the other two Vendred zombie monsters, it does, you know, put a hole in my strategy because he basically is he banish anything. Well, basically, and banish two things per turn: one monster that's special summoned, and then one back row, and that's a quick effect as well if he does use it. But right now, he's gonna go into Uni Zombie. Uni Zombie is going to send a Mizuki into the graveyard, and now if it's he has another Mizuki. He's going to go into Shiranoi. No, he's going to go into Gozuki. Now, remember, zones matter, so he's going to Synchro into another level 8. The Uni Zombie is level 4, after all. He did send a Mizuki. He's going to go into that Omega he put back. And he's just straight up just banish a card out of my hand. I'm guessing he's really trying to starve me out of being able to play anything now. And he hits my other Casper, which is good, because you technically only need one copy of a Magic Bullet monster. Preferably Casper. If you get stuck in one of the worst plays ever, and you're probably going to lose is if there's both Casper and Doctor on the field. If Casper and Doctor are both on the field, you're going to be facing a loop where they don't really run out of resources anymore, and they can always have basically two to three or four Magic Bullet cards to activate on you, basically your turn or on their own turn, and uh, all those cards are going to generate a ton of advantage. Okay, so we're going to see a special summon of Gozuki, Banishing of Mizuki. So I think that Omega play was a bit too rushed at this point because he did not leave it on the field just so that uh, I can, well, basically I can't really stop him from shuffling from the cards back, but maybe he was afraid that I would use Cross Dominator and just run it over, so that is a possibility too. But during the main phase, he can obviously dodge this very scary thing. I'll perform a Tribute Summon now. A Tribute off my own Casper. And then I'm going to proceed to swing. And then he takes 700 damage. Okay, putting him at a very, very low number right now. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, why? Why did you actually do this? And, um, 
The reason for that is if he activates any card effects right now and he gives me a, a card right now, I would probably add it to hand. The spell card will probably be a true Draco Heritage and that will allow me to get another copy of Cross Dominator and Cross Dominator basically I can attack for game which is a very cheesy way of winning so I decided to let the Ignite die and I knew that I was going to get my card back so it was okay. If he leaves his Omega on the field then he might be risking taking lethal damage from a direct attack so he has to be extremely extremely careful at this point his life is a bit too low for comfort. And my other card in my hand, I believe, is a Devil's Deal. Devil's Deal is the protection blanket card that does actually does not require Magic Bullet Monster to be on the field, but it only protects Magic Bullet Monsters anyways. So Sandby Face puts a Mizuki back. Normal summon out the Casper. At this point, it is a bit too late for him to do anything. Activate the Devil's Deal. And I'm going to get Ghost Ogre, except Ghost Ogre is a little too slow. <laughs> See, here's the reason of this chain. Um, the card of Devil's Deal must resolve and then the new chain will be the monster activating. So the resolution of Devil's Deal has already happened, therefore the Ghost Ogre will not destroy the Magic Bullet and the Cross Dominator will be able to fetch uh, oh, sorry, I'll be adding a cross dominator from hand, and that will basically allow me to attack for game. So, uh, game two, we're gonna see Ethan go first once again. And I opened two masterpieces, but luckily my hand's still within camera range, it's very visible. And Ethan will be going first. I'm gonna see if he opens the nuts, is he gonna get some Vendred action going on, or are we just gonna see just more magic bullet plays. Okay, wow, this is a, one of the best openings ever, which is pre-preparation of rights, which will give him both the Revengered Slayer and the Vendred Origin. Straight to hand, a plus one right from the get-go. Too bad Necros can't play this card because you need the Ritual Spell card to state the name. I wonder if Vengeance are gonna get even more support. Wow, even a Sharon a Solitaire, so we're gonna see some Omega action. I'm expecting my hand to get ripped apart, I'm just fanning it out for him. So we're gonna see some uni zombie throwing a Mizuki into the graveyard. Just remember that if you do use the deck effect, the deck milling effect of uni zombie to throw a zombie into the graveyard to increase level, only zombie monsters can attack for the rest of the turn. So that's something to keep in mind. Now Omega has been summoned onto the field, that was the synchro summon, and what else are we going to see? He has some vengeance on a vengeance. Uh, ritual spell, I believe, can banish zombies out of the graveyard for the ritual material, similar to Necro's uh, mirror. So we're gonna see the origin play. He's gonna be banishing the Shironoi Solitaire and the Uni Zombie. If there was something else in there, that would have been great. If the Shironoi had another Shironoi like banished, Shironoi Solitaire would revive that monster. Now we're this one here. One quick note about. Vendred uh, Slayer is that whenever you battle him uh, during the damage calculation he can banish one zombie monster from the graveyard and basically uh, get himself a attack boost of 300 and uh, he's actually a lot harder to kill he's sometimes able to counter even masterpiece by making his attack points a bit too high so there's the zombie going back into the graveyard from the Omega. So the draw, so I get the first play of a card because turn player priority allows me to do so in the main phase. But so far, main phase. Okay. This is uh, the difference between my build and other builds is that in my build, I play Brilliant Fusion over the other card, which is uh, Tides of the Brethren. I don't really want to rely on Tides. So I'm going to perform a normal summon of Shooter. Uh, this is Shooter Star. This is the one, if you activate a spell or trap card behind my card, uh, I will be able to uh, special summon a Magic Bullet Monster in defense mode from the deck. One interesting thing to point out is that I put it in the very far leftmost zone rather than to match my opponent's center zone. 
Uh, that could have been a slight misplay on my part because, of course, even my opponent's spells and traps do trigger my own effects, which allows me to kind of reposition my plays. There's a lot to think about when it comes to playing all these new decks. When the columns matter, so activate terraforming right behind the the shooter star. This is one of the best plays because terraforming used to be a one for one. Now it's going to be a plus one, fetching me a card out. Are we going to see a reaction? So we're going to add the dragonic diagram. Mind crush, man. That would be such a funny thing to see if I do get mind crush. Here. Oh, we're gonna see an omega activation. Uh, omega activation. Oh, there's a clear misplay happening right here. Oh my god, takes away the masterpiece. One slight misplay just happened on my side is that I forgot to summon a monster, the Casper. The main play, the reason why we do this play is so that we can get a Casper. But. Now that uh, they pulled away with one masterpiece in my hand, the ironic part about this whole thing is I have a second masterpiece in hand. Normally that would be a bricky situation, but luckily he pulled a dead draw and a future masterpiece is coming to town. And as for my targets, I have for the light, I'm going to put away the Calamity as I no longer need it anymore. And the second card to put away is the Gemini Garnet. Uh, choosing which extra monster zone to use, and I'm going to choose the one closest to my uh, star. And I am going to activate. I am going to activate Shooter Star. Shooter Star has been chained and responded with a Solemn Strike. Uh, Ethan will be taking 1500 life points worth of damage. This does leave my board relatively weak, in fact. Now we're going to see a Dragonic Diagram activated. What is the Diagram going to do? In my hand, I believe there is a Heritage in hand and another and another True Draco. Second Masterpiece using the normal summon from uh, the Gemini Seraphonite. And with the Brilliant Fusion, that automatically gives me one piece of ammo to blow away that Vendred. One thing to be careful, if we can activate this, he's going to aim to protect it if he doesn't want to take maximum damage. He did take 1500 from the strike. Taking another hit from a direct masterpiece would really, really be unfortunate. Set one, hop. That could have been a slight misplay right there on my part, judging the, from what I see in my hand right now. I think the whole turn actually has been played pretty sloppily, if you ask me. Even like in hindsight, I can see like probably could have popped that to deal with the strike a bit earlier on. Um, and then that could have popped the strike, and then now I'm not popping anything with that Heritage. Heritage will not draw one since I pop one spell, and then I'm going to swing into the Revendred or Revendred... Slayer, and that will actually trigger his effect. He does have a graveyard effect after all. So what is going to happen here? I believe he gets to put a Avenger monster into the graveyard and also add himself a ritual spell, which is really, really good. Now I still have uh, one of my masterpieces being banished by uh, Ethan. Draw for turn. Stand by. We're gonna get our cards back. Masterpiece is back in town, back in business. Luckily, Masterpiece being so big and he's also spell monster immune, this does throw a wrench in a bit of Ethan's plans. So he threw Revenger, uh, the Venger Hound Houndhorde into the graveyard, and he activates another copy of Pre Preparation of Rights, which will give him another. Well, there it is, the Revendred Slayer and the Vendred Origin. So I believe, is that the, th I think that's the third copy of his ritual spell now. That's all three copies. Two copies are in his hand right now. And he is going to special summon out the Hound Horde. Now, the Hound Horde does have an effect that you can... Basically, oh, so I can chain maxi to that. Chain maxi, I draw one. A revenge of Hound Horde activates by discarding one of your um, one of your other cards, and he can special summon himself back out from the graveyard. 
Now the effect does have a colon, so it does activate. It is not a inherent summon. Now as for Masterpiece, Masterpiece, the reason why I blew up the, aside from getting the additional job, the reason why I blew up the, uh, the Heritage is to give Masterpiece some ammo to actually blow up some more cards on the field, just so that Masterpiece isn't just a body. And now we're going to finally see another push. We're going to see the Hound Horde being banished, and we're going to see, well, one of these uh, Slayers are going to get it uh, banished as well. We're going to see a summon of the other uh, Slayer. So we got to draw one more card, since I am still under Maxi. Uh, this one can banish spells. And he can banish either of the two spells I control right now, just because uh, it's a quick effect. So I can do it once during his turn, once during my turn. And it's not going to actually stop him or anything. The biggest problem is the body of Masterpiece right now. It is spell monster immune, and uh, there's not much he can do unless he can actually boost his uh, Slayer twice. But he's going to use the effect. He's going to be banishing my Heritage. Although I personally would have preferred it if he banished the, the Dragonic Diagram, but <laughs> they're both basically gone at this point. Just confirming the effect. That effect is... This is insane. Now all he has to do is get rid of that masterpiece and he's basically in the clear because he knows I am in my hand currently holding a masterpiece and it's not very good. Now I'm gonna draw for turn and standby phase. Now his his uh his slayer can actually survive two hits now with two origins. Now, luckily he hasn't drawn into his re Revendred Origin, which is the trap card, which can tribute off my Masterpiece and then give himself a level 8 token. That would have been too crazy. Now, other things that the deck can do with Brilliant Fusion is if you don't open really good, in fact, you open really dead and you have a True King's Return in hand, you can use Brilliant Fusion to toss a Masterpiece into the graveyard and then use that as a body shield. Now there's a reason why Ethan does not use the monster uh, banisher, because the monster banisher can only banish special summon monsters. And we're going to see Omega basically rip a card out of my hand, and he hits the masterpiece once again. And because he hit that masterpiece, it actually put a, threw a wrench in my plays. Normal summon of the Casper. Put the Brilliant Fusion. So it was going to be a second Seravenite <laughs> Brilliant Fusion summon. So second Garnet luckily didn't brick draw into it and throw away the other Calamity. And here we here we go. We're going to see... We're going to see a Seraphonite summoned onto the zone once again. And the effect of Casper is going to go off. So now we're going to see one of the best board state establishes is going to be Casper plus another uh, I guess it's Casper plus a masterpiece that does give you a lot of options since masterpiece does offer you a lot of destruction and originally what was going to happen if he did not banish that masterpiece which would be double masterpiece Casper with an open slot behind Casper which is which is insane actually but since at this point there is almost nothing I can do about my Casper's gen gun. Basically, the gun is jammed right now. The slot's jammed, the magazine won't go into the slot, therefore I can't really do too much. Careful considerations have been played. Okay, so Cross Dominator has been added to hand. That's the Zero Negator. The Zero Negator is actually very important. The sad thing is... The the um the Slayer can banish the Brilliant Fusion, and then that will kill off the Seraphonite, guaranteed. And there's actually not much I can do about it, but I do I actually want to let it go through. If, you, if I let it go through, I open up my magazine once again to actually basically 
reload a new spell or trap onto the field. And I know that there's two revendred, uh, sorry, vendred origin uh, ritual spells in the graveyard to protect his monster. Um, the one thing I'm actually counting right now is counting how many zombies are in his graveyard because the moment he puts his slayer above uh, 3,000 or above 3,000 attack, my masterpieces are all basically useless because he can always protect it with that card. He's going to be taking a 550. I chose to attack once and not to continue the swing. I believe that is a... That is a smarter turn. I was actually kind of scared that he's going to uh, put more zombies into the graveyard and actually just swing over the masterpiece while having his uh, too many protections so I can't even deal with it. So in my hand is the monster negator. And it zeroes out. I don't think my monsters are going all my monsters are going to live. The Casper's probably going to die. I think the bigger problem monster on the field currently is the Omega. Oh my god. Another preparation of rights. Well the only preparation of rights. The other ones are pre. Basically he's been able to fetch a lot of cards. He's fetched plus one every turn with pre-prep and now prep rights. Uh, that actually puts me in a very awkward situation because he's obviously has a much better card advantage than I do at this moment. And with the Omega on the field, my hand is a bit stunned when I play my turn. Luckily, we don't get to see the full extent of the other uh, Vendred Hound Horde effect on, of course, the What's his face? Slayer. If that was on Slayer, I guess it wouldn't matter too much because I don't special summon as much and I'm not super reliant on special summoning. He has an Allure of Darkness in hand, which is going to give him even more cards. He's going to activate Allure, and Allure is not in the same column as, uh, well, he's not in the same column as my Magic Bullet monster, so I won't be able to trigger anything. He's going to banish the other Slayer. I'm not sure if that's a good idea, but he does have a ton of cards. The Slayer. Slayer has his ability to banish, uh... So what's going to happen here? <laughs> the thing about the Omega on the field so far is that it's very slippery while it's in the main phase, but if it goes into battle then that's the perfect timing to take it out, but got to be extra careful. We're going to see the attack of Omega onto Casper. I think it's actually a pretty smart move. If I choose to zero out the Omega right now, damage step, zero it out. This is only 12. The Slayer definitely can take out the Casper now. He's going to use the effect to kill off the Banish. Oh, there it is. He's going to banish off the Brilliant Fusion, which kills off the Seraphonite. And he's going to just swing. And the Casper is dead. That's uh, it's actually a pretty smart play. So use the effect of Omega. Omega is going to put back two cards. He's going to put back a Solemn Strike. Now, my Masterpiece is not Trap Immune after all. Maybe he'll get lucky and draw it with another card in his hand, but apparently not. He's past his turn. And without Omega ripping a card out of my hand, I have that masterpiece. Activate Upstart Goblin. Plus 1000. Why am I running Upstart in like a, a deck that technically doesn't require Upstart? Well, most generic plus or one for one cards can turn into a plus one if you activate behind a Magic Bullet monster, that's why.
So we're going to see Masterpiece pop the Revenged Origin, or the Avenged Origin. I, gotta, I keep getting those two mixed up. So it's the, the Ritual, so Avenged Origin. So that's dead. And we're going to see a swing. 550. It is now dead. Now I set two cards. And perform a tribute summon of Masterpiece. A spell trap immune Masterpiece. That is, that is a really tough board to actually break. Here's the reason why uh, the launch behind attacking first before putting the second masterpiece because if he uses his uh, his uh, effect uh, from the Hound Horde, he can banish one of the spells and traps, and therefore I won't be able to get oh, anything off. I can't summon off that masterpiece. And now I have two masterpieces with two pieces of ammo ready to pop cards. This is a very bad situation to be no matter which player you are. Kaijus aren't going to answer this. There's two masterpieces on the board. Uh, definitely Dark Hole will answer this, and for the one that's going to use a monster effect, the monster immune one is going to hold the board. And traps? Well, we can't really strike the other one either now, can we? And this is a very bad spot for Ethan to be in. But this is an all-in tactic at this point, there's no cards left in hand. Normal summon maxi. Instant fusion. Takes a thousand from this. Is it oh summon Theseus? We haven't I didn't expect to see this card. Now Theseus is obviously in the wrong spot here. Theseus has to be moved up into the extra monster zone. But we are gonna proceed to pop the maxi. Uh, mainly because there's a Mizuki in the graveyard, and popping that uh Theseus is not gonna do anything. And now he is in a very, very awkward spot. Who would have thought? <laughs> Use it, Masterpiece to pop Max C. Yeah, this doesn't let him synchro, don't forget. Theseus is a tuner. A level 5 tuner. That is a zombie. Uh, vanilla zombie monster in the extra deck. Oh, I got. He thought about it. Pop the maxi so you can synchro. I think he is in a really, really bad spot. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> okay, we're gonna see a. We're gonna see a. Okay, so he is actually getting rid of his uh his Theseus. And he's mad bashes Mizuki. And he's gonna summon out his uh Yeah, he's gonna summon out the Slayer. Um only one of my masterpieces can go off. If he has two material, he's still actually uh okay. But if he can't shuffle back another Revendred uh Origin, it's not gonna be good. So end phase, I'm going to destroy the prep right. But then I realized this might have been a misplay because I actually do not have double pop. If he has two copies of a, a zombie monster into the graveyard, then yes, I would have clearly misplayed and I will actually lose both masterpieces right then and there. But counting his graveyard, there is a bit of a shortage right now. He doesn't have a second zombie monster because the first... I don't have enough ammo for Masterpiece at this very moment, so I cannot use the pop effect, so I can only swing. And he can protect his monster, but he can't do it now since he's short one zombie monster to boost his Vendred or Slayer into, well, the 3000 territory, and now he's gonna be taking damage. He's gonna be banishing to boost the attack. He's. He's gonna protect. And he doesn't have a second zombie, so he's actually just gonna take this and he's gonna minimize the damage. And there goes the Slayer. There's all three Slayers dead. The, this He's done reviving himself. He's going going down at this point. This is uh, a downhill. He's, uh, he's losing it at this point. Double Masterpiece is a very scary thing. He is, if you can pull off a Miracle, this is the time to do so. 
Like, Graveyard has n no ammo for Masterpiece. So aside from gunning up my am uh, gunning up my magic bullet monsters, I also can gun up my uh, well load up my masterpieces, and I just top deck into a brilliant fusion. Brilliant fusion has no targets left. I only run a pair. I'm not going to be that greedy to run triple garnet to risk that potential bricking opportunity. I wish I played that rock, paper, We're gonna see a swing. <laughs> and no transmission gear. Okay. So there goes Ghost Ogre. And I believe this game is actually over. If you guys like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more live dual commentary, hopefully with one of the newer decks, well, don't forget to hit subscribe and uh, leave a comment down below. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and I'll see you next time.